All right. It's one twenty nine a.m. It's fucking Friday morning. I have to leave my house by 7.30, something like that, so that we can start heading over to, to Nashville, do the American Astagnus Network thing. Um, shit, I just finished listening to the new Travis Scott album, Utopia. Shit was fire. Shit was really good. Too many, too many like albums came out this year that, you know, like... He wanted it to be good. Like, I really wanted that Uzi album to be good. That shit sucked. It's just like th- they put a different amount of energy into their music. Like, like when Travis Scott releases out, al- when Scott, when Travis Scott releases an album, it feels like it's like a, a, he really put his fucking soul into that shit, and he re- he respects the craft, and he he wants it to be great. He's Travis Scott is not comfortable releasing a mid album. And it's very obvious when listening to to his material. Meanwhile, Lil Uzi Vert, I mean, dude, I don't think he gives a fuck, dude. He's he's down to release garbage for sure. And yeah, more more people like Travis Scott, please. When when it comes to the music thing, uh, that shit was great. Um, it's way too way too early to start like reviewing albums and shit. Way too early to be like. Well, what's my rating? I only listened to the to the album one time, um, but shit, I'm gonna give it a rating anyway. It's nothing less than a seven, like out of ten. It's definitely not less than a seven, so it's it's only up from there, uh, because I've only listened to each tra- each track one time, and so I haven't even given any tracks the opportunity to like get stuck in my head or for me to even like really. I don't have any favorites yet. Like I have some that really stuck out. Um, like that track with Cuddy, I thought was a banger. Uh, there was that track with Playboy, I thought that was great. Um, Twenty One was featured twice on it, which is to, uh, like a double feature. I don't know about that. I don't see why that's necessary. The features weren't bad or anything. Like they're solid features, but it's just like man, like don't don't feature Twenty One twice. It's like feature him once and then like if you're if you gotta feature somebody again shit put like baby keem on there throw keem on there or get a kanye feature even though like travis scott totally uh sampled black skinhead like th- that that was a very a kanye-esque um on, on circus maximus i think was the name of the song super fucking man you you could just hear kanye all over this album and 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 travis scott like it was undeniably a travis scott album like it it, 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 undeniably a travis scott album it's such a travis scott sound but travis scott was just like obviously so inspired by kanye it's just you 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 could hear yeezus all over it and even hints of uh you even hear hints of 808s and heartbreak and then you hear um i think SZA had had a feature on one of one of the latter tracks on the record and she totally did that uh that drake flow on there um fuck um off of that off of take care what was the name of that? marvin's room she totally did that marvin's room flow on there which i thought was cool um cool album like like i said i gave it at least a seven I, i'm gonna listen to it like a bunch more times now and It'll definitely go up from there. Shit, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed. A uh, couple misses. Like, what the fuck is Bad Bunny doing on your album? What the fuck is he doing there? We don't need Bad Bunny. <laughs> Why? Get, get him the fuck. Man, I was just hoping that that would be a single. It, like, I, I was just hoping it would be a song that... Travis wanted to release and not throw on the album. I don't know why that's on the album, but honestly, that's like the only miss. There was one other song that I got bored of. I think it was track three. Uh, let me check real quick. Um, Modern Jam, dude. That shit was kind of whack, not going to lie. I thought Modern Jam and K-pop were the only two misses. Everything else was was pretty was pretty dope, in my opinion. Uh, shit. Dope record. Um, glad I listened to it. Gonna keep listening to it. What else? What else do I have? I, I mean, the sound was so. It, the synths on it, like you can hear. Um, oh, what's that? Mother? You can hear Mike Dean all over this uh, on the synthesizers and the keys. 
And uh, and I know that Rick Rubin had a part to play in the album too. I don't know what role he played. I don't know if he simply just did like what he did with Yeezus, where he had to condense the album down, or or if he was on production. I, I don't know. I'm not positive that he made any beats for it. I'm not sure what his role was, but I, I know he he oversaw some shit. Um, yeah, uh, the sound was unique. It, um, Unique to Travis, you know, like it had a very Travis so- sound, and even the tracks where you hear features, they didn't overtake the song. There's no feature that was like, oh, this is like, for example, like on the Twenty One features, it's not like, oh, this is a Twenty One song. Like it's still, it's still a Travis Scott song, and there were some songs in there that like, you know, Travis was doing different shit with, and it wasn't like a psych rap rock song like there were some tracks where it was kind of like uppity and uh, i mean for example k-pop would be one of them and there's even that one with a cutty on it which i think is either right before k-pop or something like that um it's a shame though like when when i hear cutty on a travis song it's like i want to part of me is cool with cutty rapping and just like doing the flow that that travis is doing which is like what they always do uh, whenever Cuddy's on a on a Travis Scott song, but it's just like, I want to hear some old school Cuddy once in a while, man. Like I want to hear Travis Scott. I want to hear like the Travis Scott on this album, dude. Like I want to hear twenty twenty three Travis Scott make a song with two thousand ten Kid Cuddy, but I just don't think Kid Cuddy's gonna be doing any of that two thousand ten shit. I don't see him doing any of that Man on the Moon one, any of that Man on the Moon two shit unfortunately um even though like intergalactic had some hints of it uh but not it's like intergalactic's not even a studio album it was for a soundtrack and like it was still good but uh anyway yeah like i was still stoked to hear cuddy uh, on the travis scott song but uh i would still really really dig hearing like a 2010 version of cuddy doing his thing on a travis scott record i guess it's just not not the time uh, i was really hoping to hear a baby keem feature didn't hear any keem it, there was like no reason for me to expect keem to be on the record except for i guess they have that song like do rag activity like they have that one track uh and they might have another track together and i don't know like baby keem's fucking killing it i just think like a baby keem and travis collab would have been great especially with the aesthetic of utopia uh, i think that that was sounded really neat and if i wanted a kanye feature a kanye feature would have been dope even though i guess you could argue that the circus maximus is a kanye feature i don't i have to re-listen to it i don't think that i heard kanye's voice on it but it was very much kanye inspired it was very much black skinhead inspired so it's like in spirit it was a kanye feature <laughs> if that makes any sense um what else uh, I, I gotta listen to the track again. I really dug the Playboy, uh, th- that song Playboy on the chorus. It would have been cool if Playboy did one of the verses on that track. I don't, I don't recall. I don't think that he did a verse. Would have been cool to hear a Playboy verse, uh, but whatever. The, the chorus on that song sounded very much like something that you would have heard off of. Um, Ah, fuck that fucking that playboy record that he released christmas 2020 blood something ah, i don't fucking remember i'm not really the biggest fan of his but uh it sound, sounded like something that you would have heard off of that um james blake feature on the back end of the record uh last track on the album james blake feature i thought that was dope james blake doesn't really fucking miss and when he collabs with with travis scott they they tend to do a really good job with each other. That was also the track where you heard 21 Savage coming back for a second feature. Like I said, I'm not huge on, I'm really not huge on someone doing multiple features on the same album. I think, I think it's kind of lame. Um, but don't ask me to explain why, because for some reason I can't even articulate it right now. Like, why do I think that that, I don't know, man, like it's too much. It's, uh, if it's on production, it's another thing. Like if Metro's on production for more than one track, that's a different thing. 
Uh, but also, I would probably start to dislike it too if you if you started to hear all of Metro's tags on like three different tracks, which was kind of like my biggest beef. It was one of my biggest beefs with uh, that most recent Tyler the Creator album, uh, "Call Me If You Get Lost," because I mean you just hear that uh, fucking producer tag on like every fucking track, and I don't know, I don't dig that. Uh, anyway, yeah, two two features on the same album, kind of who am I to complain, right? Like the features were good. If the features were bad, it would be a different story. Like if, if 21 didn't, didn't kill it, it would have been different, but like the features were dope and just, I don't know, whatever. That's just like a pet peeve of mine, I guess. Just not something that, that I, that I want to hear unless it's like J Cole, like featuring Kendrick twice or like Kendrick fe- featuring Keem twice. Uh, yo, if, if, if Kendrick's going to feature Keem twice, I'm fucking cool with that. Or like, I think I just have beef against Twenty One because I'm I'm just not the biggest fan of his. I don't I don't think that the shit that he does is, is very impressive. I don't know what all the hype is. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I mean that album with with uh, that that Twenty One album with Drake uh, last year, her loss. That was a good album. That, that that was a good album, and I can't take that away. Like cool, you know, but shit 21's just not fucking impressive i don't know what all the hype is also like i hate to say it i don't know what all the hype is around future either but you know what future futures no bad features i'll say that like except for like bad bunny i don't really give a shit about bunny bad bunny but on, on utopia like let aside bad bunny were there bad features like was there was there any feature that really stuck out and i had and i thought to myself wow like this song would have been a lot better without this person uh I mean, I've only listened to the album one time, but in in the one listen that I've that I've gone through it, I can't say that there was a feature that that made a song worse. You know, there were really only two tracks that I, that I didn't like, and it was it was modern banger, some shit like that, track three, and then, and then K-pop, and it's just like everything else. That's a really solid. Uh, uh, that's a really solid ratio. I think there was like 17 tracks on the album. Let, let me check real quick. Uh, 19 tracks. 19 tracks on the record. And I'd say that like two of them, like t- take those two out. And like that's that's a really solid album, man. Like th- that ratio is high. Very very unlike uh, the Pink Tape album where it's like 27 tracks. And like, dude, you could narrow that shit down to like 12 max max 12 right like maybe seven like 10 10 would be a good number for for that uzi album but 27 get the fuck out of here like what's what come on man like respect yourself respect your fan base don't it's lame <laughs> and then of course there's a bunch of people who are riding his dick uh uzi's dick saying that that album was fucking great it's like yeah dude like you're gonna let uzi disrespect you by releasing cs <laughs> by, by releasing the worst chop suey uh, cover of all time. You're gonna let Uzi disrespect you by by dropping that shit, and you're still gonna call it album of the year. Get the fuck out of here. Like, if anybody thinks that Pink Tape is a better album than Utopia, then I'm sorry for you, dude. And also, I don't respect your musical opinion. <laughs> like, this is Utopia is ob- uh, is objectively a better album than than the Pink Tape is. Um, yeah, cool album that. That, those are my thoughts on the album. Uh, I don't fucking have. I don't, I'll keep talking about the album shit. No, I, I'll keep doing the podcast. Let me steer away from the album shit. Uh, maybe I'll post like a little separate clip of of my review of of the album. But um, I don't. Sol- really solid album. I'm looking forward to listening to it again. Anyway, uh, moving on. Fuck, dude, it's it's about to be 2 a.m. I gotta be up in like six hours. I haven't even packed yet. I, I really gotta pack. I gotta stretch, meditate, fucking go to sleep. Um, I'm probably gonna cut this short. And um, I'm happy that I got to do that that album review though. That was that was fun. Like an initial initial thoughts. Um, what else? Yeah, man, I've I've been I've been practicing my talk this weekend and and i'm really you know i'm looking forward to it and thank god i'm looking forward to it because you know just two weeks ago i was filming this podcast and i was saying that i was absolutely fucking dreading it 
and I, I'm super happy that I'm no longer dreading it. And I'm just I'm just looking forward to it. It's gonna be a good time. It's my first A and N conference. I'm gonna meet a bunch of people with my Stagmas. Uh, I'll meet some people who are on the podcast, which is gonna be weird. I'm gonna meet you know some some buddies who I've been talking to on and off for for over under a year uh, to two years now, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully we get some good brisket, some good barbecue over there in Nashville. And, uh, yeah, what can I say, man? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy right now. Life is, life is fucking good. I'm, I'm feeling good right now. You know, there's, there's something to say about like attacking life head on. And I feel like over the past couple of weeks, over the past 14 days, I have been, more proactive in the decisions that I'm making that I'm making on my day-to-day life, uh, especially when it comes to me just f- fucking buying the bullet and working on that talk. And man, I've been working on that ta- talk every day. I've been running it once or twice a day, uh, 40, 45 minutes a time, nonstop. And uh, you know, there's something. Uh, it makes me feel good. It really made me feel good. You know, it, when I when I do that talk and I just stand in front of the in front of the wall and talk for forty five minutes straight, I feel I feel good. I feel good, and I feel good right now. Like sitting here talking into the mic, I feel I feel good. Like there's something about this that resonates with me. There's something about talking for an extended period of time that resonates with me, and and I like it. And I think that I'm good at it. And I think I'm supposed to be good at it because I like it. If that makes any sense. It's like, imagine like being good at something that you really dislike. That would fucking suck. It's a good thing. I like this, you know, like it makes me feel good. Um, I almost shat myself today. <laughs> so close. I was so close. It, it, it was, it was, it was going to happen, man. Like I, yeah, I, I was doing a call with my uncle Michael, and I literally had to end the call. I was like, "Hey, Michael, dude, uh, I'm about to shit myself. I gotta go." And then I run to the bathroom downstairs, and there's no toilet paper in there, and I'm like, "Fuck!" So I run upstairs, and it's like every single time my foot is hitting the stair that's on top of the one that I'm on. Every single time I, I, I'm I'm walking up the stairs, it's like. Man, that that's a uh, I got a hold in my shit for every single step that I'm climbing, and it was like a, it was like a chase scene in a movie, man. Like you could have played some some heavy orchestral music behind me running up the stairs trying to hold in my fucking shit. Like it it almost it was almost bad. It was almost like the fucking Hiroshima bomb. As I was walking up the stairs, and don't get me wrong, the Hiroshima bomb did happen. I just, fortunately, I got to the toilet before it happened, and uh, I hope you're not eating dinner while listening to this, George, <laughs> because you're the only person who listens to this shit. Uh, I'm gonna go get some rest. You know what? Fuck, I can't even get rest. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna go post this real quick. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta start packing and I gotta get my shit together and I gotta, I gotta get my shit in my backpack, you know, not, not my literal shit. I took care of that earlier today. You know, I just gotta get my clothes in my backpack, do all that. Then I gotta stretch, fucking pray and and then meditate. That's like a whole thing. That's good. Oh man. It's, it's one, it's like one fifty, and I'm not going to be in bed until, 2.45, 2.45, I'm going to have about five hours of sleep, which is about how much sleep I had last night, too. <laughs> so, okay, all right, th- th- that's enough. This I enjoyed this very much. I hope everyone listening to this, George, I hope you have a good day, my friend, and I owe you a hug, and I, I, I hope that you listened to, to that bit that I made of you. Yes, the first time I had sex. I was thinking about our deal, and I thought of you, George, and the second I thought of you, I came immediately, and that's that's the whole joke, okay? That's the whole fucking joke. Oh, and, and the girl was mad at me for coming fast, and I didn't like her response because I think that George would have understood that I came fast. You know, I think he would have been understanding, 
If anything, George, I feel like if I came fast in front of you, bro, you would have just been like, it's okay, Frankie. We could still play Halo. And, like, I think that's how it would have gone. And I think you would have understood a lot, a lot, you know, more than any woman can. And that's why you're my bae. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm getting delusional. I'm going to stop this thing.